Good morning. Um, I'll try to make this in a quick one. As you know, uh, the last video I recorded was on Wednesday, but it didn't get finished uploading till yesterday. I'm dealing with my tablet now is completely shot, completely gone off the map. Um, so I'm having to use this phone and, uh, apparently it's data service was, uh, is limited at the moment. I've exceeded some kind of limit. Um, I got to get this situated and fixed by next, uh, when I get paid next, uh, try to figure out. And that being said, with the tablet down, that means I don't have any way of, uh, trying to practice what I was wanting to do, you know, with music, uh, finding beats, trying to put rap to it or, you know, a hip hop, uh, trying to put some words to a beat or trying to find some, uh, non-copyrighted metal music and doing some screams to it and stuff. So right now I'm in the limbo on that part of my life as well. And I can't do any stop motion really with this uh, phone. I haven't used this phone enough to know how to do stop motion too well with it. And I don't have the proper uh, thing to set it up like a tripod or anything. So this is Deepak Chopra's uh, Way of the Wizard. It's uh, Seven Steps of Alchemy. This is Step six, 6, Birth of the Seer. I told you, Merlin went on, that the Seeker's motivation was to be able to see, and soon this emerges. The sixth step, the birth of the Seer, is just below the surface of any Seeker. By itself, seeking carries no fulfillment. It would be a dry and frustrating life if you were only to seek without finding Fortunately, in the divine plan, all questions bring their answers at the same time. All goals turn out to be found at the source. Only you truly ask, where is God? Or once you truly, once you truly ask, where is God? You will see a response. I don't want to, I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to delude you here. The birth of the seer is just a revolutionary as revolutionary as any of the earlier steps. It spells the end of the ego, the end of all outward identification. Imagine that your life is a moving picture projection upon a white screen. I, as long as you are dominated by ego, you focus on the moving images and take them to be real. When the seeker arrives on the scene, you begin to sense their unreality. But with the birth of the seer, you turn and face the light. Now self-image is seen for what it is a flimsy projection made real by the ego's desperate need to place importance on the time-bound mind and body. The seer sees through this motivation and no longer buys into it. Instead of seeing yourself as flesh and bones that a house <clears throat> that house a spirit, a ghost inside a machine, you realize that everything is spirit. The body is spirit coalesced into a form that the senses can feel, see, and smell. The mind is spirit in a form that can be heard and understood. Spirit itself in pure form is neither of these and can be perceived only by refined intuition. You have heard the phrase, those who know it speak it, uh, <clears throat> those who know it speak of it not. Those who speak of it know it not. Such is the mystery of spirit. But aren't, you but aren't you speaking of it right now? Asked Galahad, looking confused. Not in the way you may think. When I speak of a rock, you can see and touch it. When I speak of spirit, I am pointing toward an invisible world. Ar arrows of light fly to us from that world in <clears throat> to ignite our souls, but we cannot send arrows of thought back. That sounds very mysterious, muttered Percival. A rose would be mysterious if you could think only... If you could only think about it and never experience one. Spirit, spirit is a di direct experience, but it transcends this world. It is pure science teeming with infinite potential. When you gain knowledge of anything else, you gain knowledge of something. When you gain knowledge of spirit, you become knowingness itself. All questions cease because you find yourself in the womb of reality, where everything simply is. When the eye of the seer falls on something, it is is simply accepted for what it is, not judged. There is no ego to need to take or possess or destroy. In the absence of fear, no such motivation arises. For needing to possess is born of lack. 
When you have no lack to feel, then just being here in this world in your body is the highest spiritual goal you can possibly attain. Percival and Galahad were much struck by this part of Merlin's discourse. They had followed the early steps with attention, but the ego, the achiever, and the giver were all familiar already. When the wizard spoke of the seeker, the two knights saw themselves as they were at the moment. The seer, however, filled them with awe, as if they were explorers arriving on a mountaintop and surveying a vast new horizon long hoped for, but not yet experienced. I long, I long to be this seer you, seer you speak of, Galahad said fervently. Merlin nodded. Which means you are ready. To a wizard, there are only three kinds of people. Those who have not yet experienced pure being, those who have tasted it, and those who have fully explored it. You have tasted, tasted and now want to explore. For you, this world will begin to disappear as a solid thing and recede into the overwhelming light of being. In a faraway land called India, they say that ordinary life becomes pale before God, like a candle that's seen bright in a dark room, but turns invisible when put out into the noonday sun. He turned to Percival. And I include you in this, in this stage too, however you imagined I judged you. Percival turned scarlet, then stammered, what will this new life be like? As always, it will feel like a new birth. The seer differs from the seeker in no longer having to pick and choose. The seeker is still involved in an illusion as he goes in around saying, this is where God is, this is where God isn't. The seer, on the other hand, sees God in life itself. The long inner war is over at last, and rest comes to the warrior. In place of struggle, you experience all your desires naturally and effortlessly coming true. There are no outward signs to mark who are the seers among us, but inwardly they feel open and content. They allow others to be who they will be, which is the highest form of love. They put up no obstruction to other people and events, and they have surrendered any small sense of I. That, that I, the small letter I within us, but there's a big capital I in us, you know, the mystical I. Um, anyway, I think, uh, I felt like I was struggling a little bit there trying to read that. Maybe I was trying to get too much, too quick, too compressed into a shorter time frame here, but I'm wasting minutes away on the video as uh, I'm just trying to make this video a little shorter and see if I can get it, uh, to upload before this Friday is over. Um, wish me luck on that. And, uh, hopefully... Hopefully, I'll be able to come up with some kind of new uh, way of doing things next week when I get paid. And um, so, I don't know. I'm going to try to make a video and announce the giveaway for the book. And I still haven't talked to Fatback Station about the toys that I want to give away and stuff. So, I got a lot of things on my plate. And I got things I got to do daily here in the trailer. Um, so, I haven't done anything a whole lot in the past couple of days. So, I mean... A few days ago, I did some cleaning and stuff, but yesterday I didn't do a whole lot, and then today I'm going to do a little more than I have been doing, so. I've been doing a lot of reading, though, a lot of reading. Um, just started another Jack Reacher bu book, Better Off Dead, which uh, I won't, it won't take too long to get through it. I just started that a day or two ago, and uh, doing a lot of heavy scripture reading, studying, um, and just contemplating life. Until next time, Mr. Cloud here, Sage of the Eternal Moment over and out. Wishing you the best day you can have. Ditto.